bag up, you know. They spell the gin the same as it was 70 years ago. You can turn your top out. Turn your top out at Goose Street, here. I was born here. And you can hit it all the way to Goose Street School and never meet a car. Never meet one. Now then, you can jump across the road at this time of day. See, I was born here, my father kept this shop. He was a tailor and drapery, he had four, four fellas working for him. Ah, but uh, uh, they've spoiled this village, you know. Building all these houses here. See, hey, uh, you knew everybody at one time of day, but now you know nobody and they don't want to know you. But I'd better get, be careful what to say about folks, or otherwise they might be prosecuted. Bell for 27 years. I was ringing every Sunday in 1916 when we were at war with Germany. Yeah, yeah. Who else used to ring with you? Percy Plant, Joe Holland, Oliver Benson. Oh, I remember him. He went to Canada, didn't he? Yeah. Ah, that's right. Yes. And uh, Sam Peake. Yes. Ah, uh, that was Millie's uh, father. That's Millie's His father. father. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rung me at 27 years. I've let that year in. Didn't you? Uh, that you, was an many you, time. You used to ring it uh, on New Year's Eve. Oh, ah. Uh, then you used to go to oh, Red Lion, didn't you? Then we used to go to Red Lion. <laughs> one year at Red Lion and one at Crown. Yeah. Oh, jolly good. Mm. And the she's, she's all that rough piece of ground there. Yeah. Well, I've proved that many time. <coughs> Walter Carter was born in Goostree in the year 1900. His grandmother had been midwife to the village and his father was a shopkeeper. But Walter himself was drawn back to the land and for nearly 60 years he tilled the fields within the sound of the bells of Goostree Church. Walter Carter was one of nine children. He then had three of his own and there are now nearly a hundred members of the Carter family in and around the village. He stopped working only last year at the age of 75. Now, as a village elder, he has time for afternoon walks along the Valley of the Bongs with his friend Leonard Grimsditch. We used to come this road with my mother and father every Sunday night, did you? And we used to come in May time when all this was covered with bluebells. Yes, there grows a lot of bluebells in here, you know. Yeah, yeah. Ah! I wonder why it was called Bongs through here. Why there was what? Why it was called the Bongs? Oh, I don't know. I don't know why it was called the Bongs. It's always, tell you. It's always, it's always been eh. called that, hasn't it? Ah, ah, it's always been the Bongs. Yeah, yeah. But it's always been here, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. ever since yeah. I can remember, yeah, yeah, there used to yeah. be a seat. Yeah, yeah. Here. Yeah, yeah. There used oh, yeah, to be a yeah. seat there. Oh, yeah, yeah. One yeah. time a day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Here comes two or three hearty lads and we all in one mind. This is that brook there. Yeah. Well, that used to be our weekend bath. <laughs> Did it? Ah. Aye. When there was a willow bed there. Aye. They see they couldn't see us when willows were tall. No. People couldn't. Ah. And they see trees were covered uh, with leaves. Ah. We used to come in there, a bed there all Sunday afternoon. Did you? Ah, we did. That'd be in summertime. Ah, that was in summertime. Uh, uh. I was in the come in winter. No, so, what did you do for a bath in winter then? Oh, we had to have one at home. Oh, I see. Yeah. Ah. Just a ball twice, mm. right? 
festival very much then. Oh, I was when I was young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shayla mm. Boy, Piccadilly, Maple Platter and... Oh, yeah. And uh, all that sort of thing. John Bull. Oh, I was John Bull twice. Yeah. My brother Bill has got, was missing in the first war with John Bull four times. Was he? Uh. And my brother Seth was John Bull twice. Yeah. And my brother Shed was John Bull. Yeah. We used to look forward to that then, days, didn't we? Yeah, did you? Yeah. Took Rose Festival. Mm. Well, it was... Uh, it was a big deal for us. That and Goosty Races. Oh, you remember Goosty Races? We used to have some fun for that, yeah, didn't we? Did we did that. Yeah. I was born there at that shop. My father kept it. He was a tailor and draper. And he had three men working for him beside himself in that place there behind there. And he used to sell shirts and stockings and all kind of uh, drapery stuff clothing and he could make you a suit for two pound ten a three-piece suit not, not the same as you go in the shop and get a, a jacket and a, a, a trousers waistcoat with it and he always used to use the best buttons and the best threads there was in the warehouse and you could go in there and buy a shirt a snaffle shirt you maybe don't know what they are they were they're not existing now, but they were good ones with a flat on the back. Good winter shirt, long ones, not these here short ones, you know, you cover your long ones. <laughs> See, and, and you know how much you can, you can get them for? Two and six of all money, two and six bucks, for a snaffle shirt with a flannel back and long ones. Brand winter shirt. The Valley of the Bongs along the Crow Brook has been inhabited since the Iron Age. In 1086, the Doomsday Book described the hamlet of Gostre as having about 90 acres rateable to be taxed and containing as much land as a team of oxen could plough in a year, adding cruelly, it was always waste and is so now. Waste or not, this half-mile ribbon of land has supported a healthy enough community ever since. By the end of the last war, its population had risen to around 600, with most houses still clustered along its single street. The building boom of the 50s and 60s began to change this Cheshire village. Red brick development spread up from the road and the river towards the circle of yeoman farmers on the boundary of the parish. The population is now over 2,000. The bones of the old village can still be seen, but now Goostery is almost a dormitory suburb of Manchester, 30 miles to the north. The old tailor's shop where Walter Carter was born is now a thriving delicatessen run by Goostery newcomers Graham and Jackie Turton. Girls come in and say they're having a dinner party and will you do me a cheese board or will you do me a variety of cooked meats, you know, which we do quite happily. But we keep things that we think, you know, are a little bit way out. We keep beautiful cheesecake at weekends that people can buy in portions so they don't have to have a whole cheesecake, which is absolutely super. We keep pâté, um, two, three kinds of pâté, which I suppose one could call perhaps a little bit um, exotic, if you like. But, uh, I can do just a wee fraction under. Okay. So there was one other grocer at this end of the village, um, a well old established grocer, um, who really, I suppose, basically wasn't happy to change his ways. I wouldn't like to think that um, we'd put the other old-fashioned grocer out of business, but um, uh, as I say, if you're not prepared to uh, have a little bit of enterprising, you know, you're not going to uh, you're not going to survive in this day and age. You've got to keep going and 
and supply all the things on, that are demanded in this village, you know. I suppose it's something you either can cope with or you can't. You've got to force the issue. Um, it's, a ni it's not over with you, it's a nice one. Mm. Taste and try before you buy. Hi girls, just had your form for the rose cream, but you've got to fill it in. Um, not Nicola, just you. They're not providing costumes or anything else. You do what you want to do, fill it all in the bottom. Okay? We enjoy home life tremendously. Um, we always, once a week, go out and have just a quickie meal after my husband's played golf. I have my WI, I like my flower arranging, my daughter's ride, and I like to see them and like to go with them. <laughs> Last year you were a bit difficult, weren't you? Um, didn't you go as, um, what's her name, girls on bikes? Yeah. Happies. Yeah, but anything yeah. virtually that's on in the village we're very happy to join in with and go to. But we have our own friends who we ask into the village. I mix with all the girls. I like them all and, uh, you know, uh, I'm very happy to mix with them all. But I think it can be very difficult in business trying to uh, spread oneself around, you know. And uh, Yes, I think it's just as well to have one's own friends and keep to them, really. Oh, this is Turton speaking, Goose Tree. Uh, desperate for coffee beans. Oh, she, she said she hadn't phoned. Oh, when can we expect it? All the shopkeepers were very kind to us in Goose Tree when we moved here and passed the word if there was anybody that were bad payers. We had one girl that came into the village, moved into the village and conned us all. She cashed these cheques. This went on and on, all around the shopkeepers here in the village and the milkman and what have you, and the news agents. And we got a little bit afraid, and one morning uh, the milkman came very early and said, there's a removal van outside her house, you see. So Lance next door and the news agents and Graham went tearing down there in the car just to see the back of them go. Anyway, lo and behold, three or four months later it became a court case, and she conned us completely. Can we go to the Mont's book because we're out of honey boy again? Mont's book. Has he taken the one spot with him? Oh, no, the honey boy will go out again. No, yes, that's it, love. Oh, yeah. I'll be giving you some tour news. You've ordered that this afternoon, man, have you? Never mind. Are you having a good one, Hello. Yes, Kitty. Margaret Oakhill, you sound very weary. <laughs> You're Nicola. Yes, just a moment. I hand her over to you. Just a sec. Margaret. Hello. Why not? Uh, just hold on a second, please, would you? And I'll uh, just look in the order book. Peter Brooks has worked in Goose Tree's butcher's shop for two years. Oh, not yet. I'll get you some gold in a minute. I think, in a sense, that this, there are two villages in Goose Tree. Uh, obviously, you've got your working class Nine, and 12. the middle class. There are one or two high class about, but uh, basically, yes, I think the middle right. class people. Um, the Hello? people that come in and have rump steak on a Saturday, <laughs> and the people that come in and have stewing steak on a Saturday. Yeah. The rump steak goes on to okay. the uh, well, estate, and the stewing steak goes at Bank View. All right, uh, in about five minutes. Okay, sit down now, sit down. <laughs> um, obviously there's that distinction about them, but I think that as a, as a community, as a village community, everybody mingles in together. Cheerio. Right, bang this on the desk, I don't watch them. Get that on your desk. Right, I'll get off with these in. See you in a bit. See Being built, Goose Tree is now, with, uh, with the intent of making it a, a middle class village and not a working class, you know, like a, a, an industrial estate or anything like that. Well, girls. I think if I had the money, to buy the houses that the people have bought down there, I would prefer to buy somewhere old, somewhere that's got character about it, 
you know, like boxes, aren't they, really? I mean, they're glorified boxes. Some of them are very nice, obviously. But uh, I wouldn't like to live in it myself. Hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. I like to think that to get on with the customers very well. Right, thanks very much, Mrs. O'Reilly. All right, thanks a lot. Bye now. ta -da. Um, I know all the people on that estate virtually. Um, they're a very nice crowd, you get on with them very well. I, I, you know, you know the families and if somebody's not well in the family, you, you know about, you, you know, you know about it within a day or so, whether somebody's ill or that, so... Hello. Yeah. All right, how's your mum? Yeah. She looks better? Yeah. There's a piece of beef for you this week. Yeah. All right, yeah. 162. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I'll see you then. Yeah. Ciao. They don't try to suppress you in any way because, you know, you're only the butcher's boy. They're always very good uh, towards towards me. Oh, Mrs. Thomas. The Brazen State this week. How much is that? Two pounds. Oh, that's, that's grand. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye now. Ah, we had some uh, nice and quiet times. You used to go across here, you know, across these like fields, fishing, mushrooming, water and egging, pea with egging. We always had to go for each day, get some uh, uh, pea with eggs and water and eggs, otherwise we didn't have an egg for each Sunday morning breakfast. I'll tell you what we've done and all. We've even, we've even collected uh, thrush legs. And have about a dozen, a dozen, a dozen of them put in a frying pan and fried. And if you get a dozen thrush legs, you, you'll manage for a, a, each a Sunday breakfast. In 1906, Walter Carter wore the costume of John Bull in Goose Tree's first ever Rose Festival. It was one of a set made for the village by his father, and those very same costumes were worn yet again by these children this year in Goose Tree's 70th Rose Day. The huge amount of work involved in organising the festival is done by a committee. That committee is headed by retired university sociologist Barbara Rogers. Her husband Brian, a Goose Tree Parish councillor, is also a retired academic. Brian, oh, you're there. Yes, I'm here. I'm trying to get this thing evenly spread. We came to Goose Tree about uh, nearly 20 years ago now, uh, uh, looking for a place, really, for our retirement in 15 years in advance of it. Well, as long as we were at the university, of course, we were pretty well engaged. And the only thing I dared take on was the Rose Festival, which I got landed with after about, been here about three years. I'm always a little bit sceptical. You know we've lost all our, our um, goldfish. Yes. Died on us. Yes. Well, I can get this, this thing, I just don't know. As far as I'm concerned, the Rose Festival has been my chief link with the activities in the village and has been uh, uh, 
a very good way for me to get into the village and know people, especially because the Rose Festival Committee has always been run by village people, naturally. And so many of the people on the committee have, were in it in their childhood. A lot of them are ex-rays, queens, and so on. We always used to say in community work in Manchester that if, there, if you want to get a community going, there are two ways of doing it. Getting up a, a protest committee about emptying the dustbins and running something for the children. <laughs> Certainly running something for the children is always a winner. But above all, for new people coming in, uh, they children can join in straight away. Most of them want to. Rose Day is a profitable event, and the committee traditionally give the profit back to the children in the form of two January parties. Today's party is for the younger children. We've got a lovely present for him. I'm sure you'd like it. Mr. Hughes, thank you very much for all you've done for the children and Rose Day. And we hope, don't we, that when he leaves us, he'll come back on other Rose Days. That's the time when you come back to Hill Street to see us. So let's say, hip hip hurrah for Mr. Hughes, shall we? Hip hip hurrah! Carefully, for people that you can recognise. You can see anybody that you know. You told me, but I don't know their names. And this is 1974, so it's the year before last. 
got one of this year, last year. Oh, there's the bomb ball. James Garrett. Alan Maynard, who's the John Ball. Can you recognise them? Yeah, that's the end of the movie. The next day, inside the old village hall, the committee meet again to discuss business. The Foundation Committee has also asked that I write to the Chairman of all associations which are represented on their committee to ask if each of these associations would help to swell our funds by donating a sum of money to the Foundation during the next year. Barbara Rogers is reading a letter from the Village Hall Foundation Committee. Goostry urgently needs a new Village Hall, and although building on the hall has started, the Foundation Committee are desperately short of funds. ...what we hope will become a real village centre. I should say that an average donation of £50 from each of our member associations would result in a boost to our funds of nearly £1,000. I look forward to hearing from you. I would propose that we donate £50 as suggested to the to general the, fund. To the well, just general to the fund, fund yeah. for the Village Hall Foundation. Mr. Huff has made a proposal. Will somebody second it? <laughs> Mr. Carter second it. That we give £50, just without any, any ties to it, yeah. uh, to the village fund in responding to this letter that we do this. Um, that is, is agreed then, is it? Yeah. Yes. Unanimously agreed that. Right. Well, then we go on, since Mr. Huff made this suggestion without prejudice to our thinking of giving more, uh, to whether we want to um, commit ourselves to giving a specific bigger sum for something that was tied to a benefit to the children. I would and like wait, just sorry. one minute. And um, the way of doing that, possibly, although I think we should make up our mind now about the sort of fund money we're thinking of, but we could then leave it to Mr. Uh, McInerney uh, to bring this up at the fund committee and see if it can be done. Well, now, Miss... Uh, I would like to make a suggestion. As this uh, school and that is not expected to be ready before, what, somewhere April. about June... Uh, well, April to June 1977. I would like to suggest that any further money we leave in abeyance till after our next public meeting, and by that time... Harriet Sweatman has been secretary of this committee for 18 years. Perhaps have purchased an acre of land. It might be big enough to hold the rose day on, and it might not. And I would like to suggest that any further money is given to the village trust is left till, until after another rose day. We're making the 50 pounds. This is what makes me cross. We used to work very hard for that village They try home. like hell. I work like hell. Yes, I know. Some of you do, John, but some of you don't. Some of you don't. Some of you don't. Now, look, sorry. please. Uh, we really other than just to nod down, say yeah, I don't see why we should give our money that we Every organisation in this village ran something at Christmas. If it was only a prize bingo or they had a printed raffle or something, the Village Trust Foundation did nothing like this at Christmas, nothing whatsoever. And everything you go to at the village centre is absolutely top price to get there. They ran a sports day for the children in August and a person said to me, I was going with my daughter, but when I discovered it was 25 pence for myself and 15 pence for my child, she said, I didn't go. She said, that's 40p besides buying raffle tickets, bags of crisps, orange and goodness knows what. She said, I didn't go. And half the village did not go for that reason because they were charging children 15 pence to go well, on that field to see points. nothing. I mean, how the hell do you raise money if you don't charge 15p for someone to come on? Well, I mean, there is undoubtedly a difficulty. Wait a minute, let, let's let him finish and then it's Mr. Huff. There, yes. there, there is an immense difficulty and the village hall has, for some reason, been terribly unsuccessful this last year. They as well as serving this committee as treasurer, John McInerney is its representative on the Village Hall Foundation Committee. And unfortunately, you know, we just happen to be the money winners somehow. The Rose Festival obviously is seen to be 
um, the outfit that has cornered the market. And it's but okay, but then you know, in a sense, the village hall is left with the dog end of everything. It it, it has tried hard. Um, but it hasn't succeeded. Now, I'm not suggesting we sort of throw our lot in with them, but I, I'm slightly concerned if we, if we s develop an us and them situation. That has developed enough already. I'm now, I don't think that the village centre tries to do enough smaller events. They put on the more lavish events, like a dinner dance, well, or, I mean, they've got... Um, They've got these uh, dancing classes on now. I mean, every institute we go to, Mrs. Hooley throws them down our throats that nobody goes. Mm -hmm. Nor this uh, type of thing. And uh, you've not paid your pound to the village centre. We get it at every institute we go to. For me, Everyone she really uh, is the Rose Festival. But Chairman come and go, committee members come and go, but Harriet stays on. I don't know whether she dreams about Rose Festival, but certainly I often get telephone calls from her and she rings me up. Mrs. Rogers, I've had a little idea. And uh, it's usually a very good idea too, but I suppose the other side, just because she has such good ideas, uh, she is perhaps not quite so happy if people oppose her ideas. Yes, well, we've had this point before, uh, Miss Wetman. Mm. This is a, uh, a criticism yeah. of the way in which they manage yes, the no, affair. I'm sorry. And I would like to emphasise we must not get this too much them and us because the village foundation is nothing if it isn't a federated body of all the associations in the village working to help them. So... Um, but in the past, you know, we uh, virtually have been, I think, the only organisation in the village that has donated money, other than the WI. Uh, she lives at uh, uh, Twemlow uh, Green. Uh, until but quite recently, so her old mother ago. lived there, That's and her sister, who spent most of the time at home looking after her mother, while <coughs> Harriet <coughs> has always been out to work. She's sharp with exercise, very much. Yes. <coughs> shopping. Um, and Jess, the brother, don't ask me quite what Jess does. I know he buys and sells things. Uh, you never know what new notice is going up outside their cottage and what there is to buy and sell. Uh, he wants more milk powder. Yeah. Then he'll get a bit fatter. Yeah. All right. Jess Swetman has no land of his own, so every day he has to exercise his bull in the streets of the village. My brother goes out gardening and he has a few cattle which he looks after as well in his spare time. He buys them as tiny ones and he rears them, he feeds them up and rears them and looks after them and then he sells them. He walks them up the road on an altar and get some train and they all know him they know his footsteps he originally worked on the, on the land of course my brother and uh, he's had um, he's always been interested in cattle he is very very keen on the, on the, on the farm horse I would say he was a very happy person, you know, he's, I don't think much worries him really. You want a biscuit, Jess? Yes, sir, I'll have to. Well, not much in, not <laughs> until the end of the week. What is it? To the end of the week? Come on, there. So you've had a very enjoyable day, have you? Oh, very nice, actually. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Enjoyed yourself today? Huh? Ah. Won't be going again for a bit. No. No. They stopped Mossy from selling them, believe it. Have they? Why? Well, I haven't sold. We weren't selling any today, Mr. Moss. Mm. Were there many in? Quite well, a lot. Not a lot of cows. Mm. Many heifers. Oh, ah, uh, quite a lot of young cattle.
It's Friday night, the night of the second Rose Festival party. This one is for the older children up to 14 years old who took part in last year's Rose Day. Among them are the girls who will compete for this year's title of Goose Tree Rose Queen. As the secretary of the Rose Festival Committee, I feel that it is my duty to be there first or on good time. Well, I'd just like to think that everything is going to be ready. I think that's very important, you know. If the committee are ready ten minutes before, they have that, that ten minutes to relax, to have a chat. They may want a cup of tea, you know. And I think it's terribly important, actually, to be ready. I have little really to do with the, the preparation of the food but it doesn't bother me in the least as long as people turn up and everything is ready uh, it doesn't bother me I have no butterflies in my stomach it's quite important to me and I just hope that whatever happens to the rose day in the future that it will never be changed that it will always be a rose day I think that is the most important thing for the tradition of the Rose Day, that it remains the same. No These parties have been organised now since about 1948 or 9 and they are just solely for the benefit of the children who have taken part in the previous Rose Day. It is our appreciation to the children. They go for perhaps two months prior to Rose Day for dance practices and things like that. For a long time it was one party on Saturday afternoon, but then when you were getting 200 or more children, as we used to do in the village hall for tea, and I suggested it was split, and it was split. And it was a wonderful, you know, it was getting um, jolly hard work and by splitting it we have, I think, made it more enjoyable both to the children and to the committee and to everyone. Oh, I want your birthday, so when I open that, it's in the 
I was caretaking this village yard for 21 years. 1938 I took the keys of George Bailey till 1960 I think it was, 60. But I, I, I won't go and tell you what I've seen there because I've seen some things uh, that are not fit for the human eye. In 1916. 16. How, how long did you carry on till? Until uh, they stopped me during the war. During the war, they didn't restart after the war. No. No. That's pretty good. Uh, I was the caretaker of this place for 21 years. Okay. I think I've seen some things. Yeah. I saw a lot of fellas come in there that had a lot of drinks and they come to Dandy's. There was a pub across the road called the Crown Inn. Well, I used to keep a, a, a bottle of coke for after hours. <laughs> after hours, so oh, ah. Uh. in the summer have been told all the girls were the right age and quietly at the back but one or two some of you have already put in but we do hope that the others who might be raised for you could be will put in too because the dance is much more fun isn't it when we have plenty of candidates for the rose queen Whoever's chosen as Rose Queen will be the central figure on Rose Day and to qualify, a girl must be 13 on the date of the selection dance. She must also have taken part in three consecutive Rose Festivals. We don't really talk about it much, but we talk about the dresses and what we're going to wear, how we're going to walk and everything. I thought about what number I'd like to walk in and I thought fifth would be nice because then you know how to how to walk and everything like that. Your guitar's out of tune, you know. It isn't, look. That is a bit, isn't it? Let's try again. I bet that's worse. <laughs> Just play E, see what happens. Yeah, that's all right. Mine's lower than yours, but I'm going to teach you a new sh song. What? What's it called? Down by the river. Um, what's we call it? Put your <laughs> hand in the hand of the... And still the water. I think you know part of the chorus, don't I you? I know the chorus, but I don't know the verse. Well, let's see. I know the chorus. The verse is, um... Um... 
Mama taught me how to pray before I reached the age of seven. Mama taught me how to pray before I reached the age of seven. All my family are going and my brother, my sister, her boyfriend, his mum, um, me, mum and my dad, my auntie, my uncle, another auntie, <laughs> and um, two friends of my sister's. My granddad's not very well at the moment, so he might not be going. And I don't know about my grandma, she might be going. <laughs> oh, when I'm down on my knees, that's when I'm close to heaven. What do you think, Pat? Is this still tomorrow for us? On the occasion, do you think? Limit, Eight Booth Bed Lane, Goose Street. I was born there in you know, the sitting room. Well, it's a council area. And um, my dad works for um, Victor Tells Me a Port near, near the Manchester Ship Canal. He builds a power station, doing concrete and things like that. Oh, that looks lovely, Christina. Have a look at yourself. Yeah. I like that one. Oh, it looks nice, that one. Yeah. I think I'd be a bit you know, nervous there if I walk around with other people staring at you. You know, go blushing. Yeah. It's just the girl's face who won last year, Nicola Chapman. And she's so pleased with herself. Oh, Christina, that's nice. I just had to show it was me there, you know. I was excited and a bit giddy. <laughs> Mm. Oh, yes. Can I tell Mum how much then, shall we? How much is that then? Alright, let's have a look. I'm going to get it down here. 1355. Is it worth it? Yeah, let's go. I'll let you know. If I did win, I don't know what to say to myself. I'll just be excited and happy. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm not nervous about it now, but I will be on the night. It's just that, you know, when you're walking, when you first of all, you walk with the retiring queen and everybody's going around with you. But it's just that when you come to be on your own, and then when you get to the top part at the back of the village hall, it's, you know, you go funny inside. Because uh, most people are at the back of the hall and they're all cheering and that, and it's, it just puts you off. Well, I think it will anyway. Janet's my best friend, and uh, she's lived in Goose Tree longer than me. She's she was born, you know, in Goose Tree. And when we were, went to the primary school, and I met her there, and I was about seven. And I've been friendly ever since. You know, how we quarrel a lot, you know, like that. But you know, we make friends soon. If um, Janet became the quick rose queen. Um, I won't be against her at all because if you're going in for kind of things like this, you should, you know, congratulate them because it's not worth, you know, falling out with them. We've been in Goose about 18 months and, um, well, we've been in the Rose Festival actually only once, but um, it's, it's very interesting and it's good fun. And the Rose Queen always seems to have um, a lot of things to do, and I thought it would be quite nice to have a go. I don't think I've got much of a chance, because I think one of the girls there has got a very good chance. Well, I think um, Paula Francis is a very, very strong favourite, and she goes to the Congleton Secondary School, and I go to the Grammar, so I don't see her that often, but um, she's a good friend of mine, really. Um, I think Janet Massey's also got quite a good chance, and she goes to the same school as Paul, actually the best friend, <laughs> so whoever wins, you know. But I, I know her quite well as well, I see her at the bus stop every morning. If I was chosen for uh, to be Rose Queen, I'd be very, very pleased, I'd be um, delighted. Some of the girls I think would probably be going in for it would be um, have a grunt against me, because I haven't been in Goosebury as long as they have. But I'd like to be Rose Queen, yes.
flickering shadow of love on her Amen. 